We had a couple more victories before going into your Anderson Silva fight in Brazil. Um, that was a pretty big fight for you. Uh, can you talk about that one? Um, yeah, that really like I I knew um, after the Kristoff fight I need to put a, a winning streak together. I need to get two more wins. And then um, I knew it with my age and kind of how broken down I was physically. I knew I didn't have too many more in me. So that was my plan, uh, was to win two more fights and then parlay that into something big. And so I did, I, you know, I beat Igor, then Kyle Kingsbury, and I fought smart. I just worked him over on the ground. I didn't take any damage. The idea was put a winning streak together, and parlay that into the type of fight that you know you really uh, make entertaining, you know, make people remember. And that that was my way of thought. I was like, um, and my idea was to, to fight Forrest again and go on a campaign so that they'd allow me and Forrest to coach the Ultimate Fighter, and then fight each other. And I would have been so thankful that I would express my gratitude by going in there and putting on just a crazy barn burner entertaining fight, you know? And that was the plan, but uh, Dana didn't, um, didn't like the idea, so wouldn't go along with it. And he really was like, it's all about like, I was just being honest, at my age and everything, I had already fought John Jones, and now since then he's gotten a lot better, like, I, I knew where I kind of was. I wasn't like, oh, I want that title, I want Jones again. It was like, no, I want to have, a memorable fight and then retire. That was my plan. I want to have a big fight. That was it. Like coach a show with Forrest, put on a crazy fight, win or lose, who cares, and then retire. And uh, it just wasn't happening. wasn't happening. Like, uh, you know, it, it, he was just pissed. Like, what are you even fighting for if you, if you don't care about the title? Because I was honest. I was like, I don't care about the title fighting Jones. Like, I want to fight someone like Rampage or Forrest then put on a super entertaining fight and then hang it up. And he's like, hey, what's the point of just sitting around the division? If you're not hunting for that title, you should retire. Um, and uh, he actually called me into the office and uh, gave me that talk and then threw me 10 G's and said, come work for me and, and gave me a position with the UFC where I was on a salary and getting health insurance. Uh, so I was actually um, working for them when... Uh, and I kind of let myself go, like I, I, you know, like you can't work for them and fight for them. Yeah. So what I just your job? stepped down from fighting. Kind of what Forrest does now, where just whatever they need me for, like I, they sent me to judge a Hooters contest. I come in the office, we'd like shoot videos. Me and Forrest would like talk over our fight. Um, what did we, they had me do a lot of TV stuff. Uh, Oh, like go to the boys and girls club and hang out at the barbecue and talk to them. Go to schools and talk to kids. Like a lot of like uh, PR and what's a com community outreach. So pretty joke of a job, you know, go to the fights and um, yeah, so easy job. But they, uh, and I let myself go. I have been um, in the gym. Like, why, why should I go? I'm like working for them now. I'm not going to fight. But I got a call uh, from Josh Rafferty, who's down in Tampa, who said, hey, Dave Batista's going to do an MMA fight, and we're putting a training camp together. We want you to come down here. Um, you know, we'll pay you pretty good and come down here a few weeks and train. And, and I was like, cool. You know, he's like, w w when, when is this? He's like, oh, in about six weeks. So it was like, all right, um, awesome. And I'm like, cool, man. Like, you know what? Like, I'm going to go get back in shape, hit the weights, do some juice and fucking, uh, you know, get my strength back and then go, you know, give him some good training for a few weeks. So that's what I did. And uh, went down, uh, you know, did my cycle and trained and got back in six weeks too. I got like a really good results. And, uh, anyways, went down there. And um, at the end of the training camp, I was there like a little over two weeks. Um, I had one more day and the last day we were going um, scuba dive and lobster fishing like uh, down off the coast. Uh, and, uh, let's see, it was yeah, the, before the last day of training, um, I got the call from Dana that was like, hey, fucking uh, our, our main event and the co-main event are off. Like I can't remember it was the co-main event, but Jose Aldo's main event, he got hurt and those fights are scratched. 
and they were going to scrap the whole UFC Rio card. And Anderson had just fought Chael and beat him, and uh, he, he's like, Anderson said he'd step up and save the card, and out of the like list of names we gave him, he picked you to fight. It was like, holy shit, this is like everything I asked for. Like, when's the fight? In like three weeks. And I'm like, wow, like, it just so happened that you know, I went and trained and got my strength back. I didn't bring the shit with me and I went down, trained Batista, got him ready, did a few weeks of MMA training. Now I got a couple more weeks to get sharp and spar and get my cardio up and like, holy shit, like this just all happened for a reason. I thought I was gonna either beat him or give him a hell of a fight, you know? And uh, of course that didn't happen. And uh, yeah, I thought that shit would be out of my system too and it showed up and then I got fired from my job, and yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was it like fighting him in Brazil, like where he's a hero pretty much? Uh, it was awesome. It was a great experience. I was, uh, I was a little tight. You could see when that fight started, and he saw it in me. I was, I was definitely nervous. He, uh, he had just fought to defend his title. You know, he was a good. He used to fighting. Um, I had been from like, you know, a, a month prior in my mind was totally never thought I'd fight again, you know, I, I, I was working for the company. So, it, it, yeah, I, I was I was pretty tight and I knew that when the first round started. So I didn't want to let him get too comfortable. I just wanted to get off punches and clinch him, look for takedowns. And that was the plan. It was working. Um, it was working fine. Uh, beautifully and out of all the things he does a little wrestling move a russian arm drag trip and right before that i looked up at the clock and like 30 seconds left like i could do this for two more rounds easily because honestly his punches were nothing like i could eat his punches all night so i thought right then like okay he's not gonna stop me you know but motherfucker knees like a mule and yeah he set up a little wrestling move, a little rushing arm drag and he tripped me and I, uh, part of me wanted to just stay on the ground because that was the plan. Hey, if it ends up on the ground, that's good. Like, uh, you know, you want them on the ground, top or bottom, it didn't matter. So, trip me, like, oh, good, you want to be on the ground. I'm like, man, but if I finish the round on bottom, like, I'll definitely lose the round. It was a close round, but at, at, up until that point, I had done a little more, in all honesty. So, I'm like, fuck, man, I don't want to give the round away. And I tried to stand up, and he did a really good job of, as I stood up, shoving me. So I bounced off the cage, and now my momentum's coming into him. And I will see it coming. I think he's going, like, jump knee upstairs. So I'm, I'm like this, and it goes right between the elbows into the solar plexus, and it just crippled me.